Is it possible to reduce the risk of a brute force attack? And the answer is absolutely yes. Let's jump in. As we consider all of the network devices that the attacker might love to compromise and to control, one of those devices is a router. And one method the attacker can use to gain control of that router is through some type of a password or login attack. The attacker may have a huge list of possible passwords. For example, let's say they have a list of 11 million possible passwords they want to try. And what the attacker could do using an automated tool could attempt to log in with the first of those passwords, then the second, then the third, and work their way through that list. Now, as you can imagine, it may take quite a while to go through an entire list. But unfortunately, unless we do something in measurable terms to prevent the attacker from trying all those passwords, it's very likely that one of those 11 million passwords is going to work. Now, this is an example of a dictionary attack using a list of passwords. Another type of an attack is a brute force where the attacker tool is simply generating password combinations and is trying virtually every possible combination. And with that method, giving enough attempts to log in could be successful. Now for either one of these, a great mitigation technique is to use at least eight characters or more. Bigger is better and more secure. Upper and lower case, alpha numerics, and special characters. And by using this combination of techniques, we can help reduce the effectiveness of these types of attacks. However, on top of that, what we can do at our router is we can set delays. We can tell the router, you know what? Please make the user wait five seconds or 10 seconds between each login attempt. So for example, if we make the user wait 10 seconds between each attempt and we have a dictionary attack with 11 million entries, that would be 110 million seconds based on this 10 second wait interval of just waiting time in between each of those passwords. So that will help reduce the effectiveness of a brute force or a dictionary attack. Another thing that you and I can do is specify the maximum number of failed attempts. For example, if the attacker is trying to log on as admin and we've specified the maximum number of failed attempts, we could say if there's three failed login attempts within a 60 second window, we want to go ahead and lock down logins for admin for a little period of time, like a quiet time. So in that scenario, if three failed login attempts within 60 seconds caused a 30 second delay, now the attackers using brute force or dictionary attacks could try three login attempts, then they'd be locked out for 30 seconds, and then they could try again. And using these two options together absolutely are gonna reduce the risk of an online brute force or dictionary attack. So let's implement this here on router one. The first thing we're gonna do is go into configuration mode and we'll simply tell router one, hey, listen, let's do a delay between login attempts. Let's set it to five seconds. And the syntax for that is login space, delay space, and the number of seconds you want between logins. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna specify that there's gonna be a wait time for failed login attempts. The syntax login block dash four 30 says that we're gonna go ahead and do a timeout of 30 seconds and not allow a user to go ahead and log in if there's been three failed login attempts within a 60 second window. So to test this, let's go ahead to this PC at dot 25. We'll do an SSH session over to R1 and we'll attempt to log in and we'll fail the login three times. Now on this computer, let's verify I'm at the right device with an IP config just to verify the IP address, which is 10.1.0.25. That's great, and my default gateway is 10.1.0.1, which is R1, let's make sure I can ping it. That looks great. And now let's go ahead and run PuTTY. So in PuTTY, I have an entry for R1. Let me go ahead and click on load to load that. That's gonna be using SSH over to 10.1.0.1, which is great. I'll simply double click it to launch it. And let's log in as Bob. Now there is no Bob account on this device, but I'll go ahead and put a password in, press enter. And it's going to fail. It's also going to have me wait five seconds before I can try again. So I'll put in another password for this non-existent user. And then it's going to make me wait. And then finally, the third password it should, when I press enter, it should kick me out and quiet time should be activated. So there's my message saying that I am no longer connected. And over here, back at the command line, we have a message that quiet mode has taken place. So it says quiet mode is on. Here's the user Bob who triggered it. It applied this default access list that's associated with quiet mode and it has the reason and that is the login authentication failed. Now after this 42 seconds expires, let me go ahead and unpause my screen here. 
it should go ahead and take off quiet mode, which means I can now attempt to log in again. So just for grins, let's validate that we can go ahead and log in. Let me close that old putty session. Let me launch putty again. We'll go ahead and double click on R1. We'll log in as admin and the password for admin. I'll supply that. And we are successfully logged in as admin. So using the techniques of slowing down the retries and setting up a quiet period for failed authentication attempts can help mitigate or reduce the risk of an online brute force or dictionary attack against your Cisco router. And in a small environment where we don't have a AAA server to rely on for those types of services, using the commands I've demonstrated in this video may be our first and only line of defense against that type of an attack. I have had a great time and I'm glad you joined me for this video. If this type of topic on security is interesting to you, here's some other courses up at CBT Nuggets that you may want to check out. Security Plus from CompTIA, ISC Squared CISSP. We have CCNA and CCNP security and also our pen testing with Linux tools course, which involves Backtrack and Kali Linux. So the first one here, the pen testing would be about implementing a type of an attack and the bottom four would be all about mitigating or reducing the risk of that type of an attack. So again, thanks for watching. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.